Welcome back to another exciting episode of Team Carter Family Podcast. Mm-hmm. My lovely co-host, David. Hey! <laughs> um, and tonight, and I'm Jennifer Carter, and tonight we are going to talk about Christmas traditions. traditions. Woo! Because Christmas is my favorite holiday. I'm pretty partial to Thanksgiving, personally. I mean, Thanksgiving is pretty awesome, because your only responsibility is to, like, say what you're thankful for, and be thankful all day, and eat, mm-hmm. and then take a nap. Mm-hmm. But It's Christmas without the materialism. Woo! Hot take. <laughs> so, I guess I was thinking tonight, like, Christmas is wonderful with our kids. I think it makes me appreciate it. I mean, I loved Christmas as a kid, but I think I appreciate it even more as a parent with kids of our own because it just makes the wonder come alive just seeing it through my kids eyes is really fun so um thinking about what is your favorite christmas tradition if you had if you have them like from growing up what what was your favorite and while you're thinking of that we're going to share some of ours so david what's your favorite christmas tradition? my favorite christmas tradition like growing up Growing up, um, so I come uh, from a pretty, from some solid redneck stock, and my favorite Christmas, one of my favorite Christmas memories, is we would all go to, to uh, Grandma B's house. Um, now her name, if 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 you're from anywhere else in the continental United States, in and I, I say Hawaii and Alaska included, so I'll, I won't be exclusive to the continental. If you're from anywhere else in the U.S., maybe except for a couple of our wonderful southern states, you would say her name would be Beatrice. But because we're from South Carolina, specifically Rock Hill, she was Beatrice. But we used to all go to Grandma B's house. And um, my dad had seven brothers and sisters so there was a lot of people a lot of kids a lot of cousins and we shoot fireworks so there'd be a big meal and then we would all shoot fireworks now this is back in the in, in the late 80s early 90s when you know there weren't a lot of rules about fireworks and and um there were bottle rockets shot and roman candles going back and forth and those little boxes that you put on the ground and blow up everywhere and and um my dad used to talk about and he'll still talk about the old 97 it was apparently some legendary uh piece of artillery that they used to shoot he's like talking about show. i'm not really sure you know it after a while it just takes on a life of its own it might it might as well have been a fuel air bomb you know the way they <laughs> talked about it the old 97 um and i just remember you know, uh, running around in the cold, shooting fireworks, you know, just having a good time. And then running back inside when you got too cold to eat something, then running back outside. And somebody would make those haystacks, which are, you know, pretzels covered in peanut butter or chocolate and stacked on top of each other in oh, little stacks. And then um, somebody would make some deviled eggs, maybe some deviled eggs there, maybe some ham. There was always a a wild gang of kids running around, a couple of dogs in them in the mix. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Um, and there was a trampoline. I, I don't know how we didn't all die on the trampoline because it, you know, it, it wasn't one of these trampolines that had the net around it. No way. This was a trampoline with no kind of nothing. Had like the metal springs still sticking up. Metal springs. People would yeah. flip off of it, land on their necks, and. <laughs> Everybody, everybody. Yeah, while shooting fireworks at the same time. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. That is probably, I have some, that's like a formative Christmas memory for me. That sounds like a family Christmas that I would want to go to. That sounds yeah. like a lot of fun, actually. Mm-hmm. And then did you guys do Christmas presents like Christmas Eve, or did you do like a Christmas Day thing, or this is all Christmas, Christmas morning. Eve? Christmas morning were the presents. Okay, so this was like Christmas Eve, yeah. the fireworks and shit off the old 97. Yeah, the old 97. If you Christmas know what Eve. that is, please let us know what that is, because that sounds like fun. I don't know. Um, yeah, that, so that was Christmas Eve, and then Christmas morning was always just at our house, and we'd, we'd, um, 
we'd all get up early and um we had a I, I have three older sisters so we had a decent sized family i do remember one christmas in particular this is when we lived in pickens um on dear Chris, old dear old pickens uh on christmas morning super early i i was in maybe fifth grade sixth grade Everybody was home, which is a big deal because I have older sisters, so they were all home from college. Um, and Christmas morning, for some reason, got open presents, and somebody just happened to look outside, and there was this giant pig. I mean, full-on, humongous hog. swine, hog, sow, came up on the front porch of the house. Um, and so... I think we all ran outside and I don't know what we were going to do with it, but they started chasing it. And your pigs are faster than they look. And it, of course it ran from us and it ran down the street and, you know, we never saw it again. <laughs> this was like 95, 96. It just ran away. It just ran away. I think one of my sisters said that it was trying to escape from being somebody's Christmas dinner. Wow. And that's fun. That's memorable, though. It's very... That's super memorable. Memorable. Wow. Well, when I was a kid, um, I can remember we had three full-on days of Christmas. I mean, it was, like, starting Christmas Eve. Um, we would all go to church. And I really like a good traditional candlelight Christmas Eve service at church. I mean, I think I appreciate that more as an adult than I did when I was a kid, but I appreciate um, my parents taking us to that as kids because I just, it makes me appreciate it more now. And um, both sets of my grandparents would come. And so it would be like our whole family, you know, taking up like three pews and we would go do a Christmas Eve service. Um, and then we would go over to one of my grandparents would have a Christmas Eve like party and we would do like um kind of like buffet style and then that would be like the time when you know we'd all eat and listen to music and then we would get the kids and I guess it was, well, it was now, like family presents. Yeah, you, you have to mention here that it was that the the twenty fifth was also Pops' birthday. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Sorry, 24th. sorry, sorry. Twenty fourth. Christmas Eve. Actually, okay, let me back up. Actually it starts Christmas Eve at lunchtime because we go out for his birthday and yeah. we always thought that you know i mean he gets double presents and double pops is the, pops is just this legendary figure he's amazing he played football at newberry college back in the day back in the 50s well respected in the community mm -hmm. um growing up he was everybody's like principal um from i think elementary school middle school something like that um but he was also a football coach and so everybody um Thought very highly of everybody thought Pops. very highly of him, and I so growing up, people were always like, "Oh, that's your granddad." You know, here's my principal, and I got a whooping from him. I think so many adults were, you know, back when you could spank kids at school, told me that that was the worst whooping I ever got was from your granddad. <laughs> it's like, okay, sorry, yeah, you probably deserved it. I'm oh, sure you deserved I'm it. Sure, you deserved it, but okay, thanks. Um. But yeah, so we we always go out for lunch on his birthday, and then we would do the Christmas Eve thing at church, and then we would go over to their house, same grandparents, go over to their house for Christmas Eve, like a party, and all the family would do um, presents from family, like uh, on Christmas Eve, and so I mean that was just a wild time of, you know, the more kids we added, it was like you know there's paper everywhere, and um, it was just really fun, and so um. Uh, my family, that's why my family are all Clemson fans, and so, you know, I think every year, um, the grandparents would get everybody the same shirt, or the guys would all get, like, matching boxers or something, and so we always do this picture of, like, um, you know, everybody wearing their, their, their same, like, Christmas shirt, or Clemson shirt that they got for Christmas, so that was fun, and then Christmas morning, um, so for Christmas Day, we would do, um, presents at home, uh, and then we go back over to the same grandparents for Christmas Eve dinner. Now, growing up, was dinner a lunch or was it dinner? Dinner was. We're from the south, so what is it? Dinner is late. Dinner is a late meal. 
Okay, well, okay. When my grandparents call it Christmas dinner, they mean Christmas late lunch at like one or two. How about, how about supper? Supper is dinner. A supper. Okay. So, late lunch, one or two, we go back over there for, you know, Christmas. I could see Thanksgiving Christmas dinner, feast, Christmas dinner. Right? It's a it's a mid afternoon. It's a mid afternoon. Right. It's a it's a you know fast until lunchtime because you're gonna mm-hmm. like load up with food plates kind of thing. And then, um, yeah, and then pretty much after that, we were I think tired and we'd go home. Um, usually, we'd bring our presents that we got at Christmas morning over to their house, so we'd be playing with them at their house too. And then the day after Christmas, it's still going. The festivities still keep going. Um, we would go to my... It sounds absolutely exhausting, by the way. It's like the middle, it's like the middle age. It's like 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, we had three days of Christmas, but it was fun. Um, and then, so the day after Christmas, we would go to my mom's parents' house. Not their grandparents, but we're in Charleston as well. And we would do a barbecue because we would want to do something different than like... We're tired of ham and... Dressing you can only eat so many ham sandwiches. They're so good. But, like, you just want to do a little variety. And so every year, they would drive up to the original Duke's Barbecue out of um, Orangeburg area. And they would drive up and get Duke's Barbecue. Shout out to Duke's Barbecue. Shout out to Duke's Barbecue if you've never had it. It's incredible. Mustard-based? Now they have a Charleston location, of course. But before they had their Charleston location, they would drive like two hours to get Duke's barbecue. Well, unless, and let's just be specific we're talking about it because this could be a pretty contentious subject. Talk about barbecue. This is mustard-based. Um, it's pulled pork and hash and rice kind of barbecue. Oh, yeah. This is the type of place that had the red checked tablecloths with loaves of, of white marita bread on the tables. Mm-hmm. There there might be some Texas peat. They make a good Duke's cobbler too. Maybe there's some... Um, what's the oil of jalapeno that has i don't know i can't know where it is but this is not your you know this is not your fancy barbecue place now this is duke's and there are a lot of good barbecue places you know no shame to all the other barbecue places i'm just telling you that duke's barbecue is where it's at and this is where my yeah i mean you know, we live in parents yeah i live in rock hill to duke's barbecue yeah and we live in rock hill now and there's some really good north carolina barbecue places not far away and north carolina has a and north carolina has a has a different well i say vinegar based it's really mustard based because there's <clears throat> there's obviously vinegar in mustard but it's it's more kind of yellow mustard now north carolina has just vinegar based and tomato based right? and, and tomato based and to, now that's pretty contentious too but um right near oh, us is more too, is more pure vinegar based which i i personally really like just the pure vinegar based um and tomato based isn't bad just, just me personally, but anyway, sorry. Well, anyway, that was not just it, and then we'd go over there and have a really nice barbecue dinner, and then my cousins would come in from out of town, and um, you know, see a family that would come in town, and it was just fun because then we'd do another family Christmas, we'd open gifts, um, you know, play soccer in the front yard, and you know, as kids run around like wild people, you know, jumping in the bushes and playing soccer in the front yard, and until it was dark, and it was just so much fun. And so, that's Christmas memories. What is the, I don't want to focus so much on gifts, but, like, what is maybe a Christmas memory that, like, was, like, a standout? I mean, the, the, the pig in the old 97 is pretty hungry. Okay. Like, what's, that, um, what's a Christmas morning that really stood out to you as a kid? You know what's funny is I really don't, I mean, I remember things that I got, but that's not the main <clears throat> main memory that I think about when I think about Christmas. I remember getting, I remember when I got a PlayStation, that was a big deal. Um, the PlayStation 1 and I got a PlayStation 2. I remember that very distinctly. Um, I was in middle school. And then, that was, that's really, <laughs> if my parents listen to this, I loved every gift you ever <laughs> you ever bought me. Amen. Uh, and and I'm so thankful for the wonderful Christmas presents you provided. <laughs> but those are the things that I really, really, really remember. How about you? <clears throat> um, I think when when I mean it's not about gifts at all. Um, but I think gifts that I was really excited about getting as a kid. 
was, um, I got, I think I was in third grade, I got a boombox stereo with a um, Hanson Brothers CD. Was it karaoke? It was in that. Was it a karaoke machine too? Um, no, I don't think it was, but it, it was, I don't know, it was fun. Because I remember I put, I got it at the family Christmas party, the first Christmas party that we had, and I um, put on the music and danced around it, and it was fun. <laughs> and everyone's like, who are these people? And I was like, it's Mbop. It's great. It's Mbop. It's Mbop. And um, <laughs> a couple years later, um, me and my brothers asked for Razor scooters, and that was really fun. Back in Razor scooters, and apparently they're still around. They're they're pretty cool too. Um, and every kid in the neighborhood, I think, got a Razor scooter that year. And so Christmas morning was like. I mean, we just look like the Razor Scooter gang out front with like 20 kids all with Razor Scooters racing up and down the street. So yep. that, was, that was pretty memorable. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I know I got, I got a ton of stuff for Christmas. What is something, shifting from when we were kids, what is something that you really look forward to now as a parent with kids? Like, oh, <clears throat> well, before we switch, I do oh, remember on Christmas I asked for almost purely action figures. And I got action figures like what? Like uh, GI Joe. Oh, GI Joe. Okay. Power Rangers. Okay. You know, action figures, and I got a bunch of action figures. That's fun. I remember that very well. I remember getting a basketball goal. Um, I remember getting a bike. I remember my mom helping me i don't know where we got this old bike but helping me spray paint and put new grips on and fix the brakes and fix the chain on an old bike and that was my bike that wasn't a christmas present necessarily but i remember that another christmas tradition this wasn't necessarily a present but something else that my parents church would do that i really loved is um uh a guy in the church, um, awesome guy, Mr. Gene, if you know him, he's great. Um, he's a legend of a character as well. Um, he would, had this trailer and he would set it up like a hayride every year and he would go around um, and take families, that want, anybody that wanted to go, and we would carol um, to all the shut-ins or people that couldn't normally go to church, who couldn't leave their houses. And so we would, a lot of them lived in this one neighborhood, and so we would ride around the neighborhood and stop at every house that was on the list and stuff and sing to her and then I'm gonna tell a story right now. I remember <laughs> Jen and I were dating oh, or engaged. Great. David has actually been to and, uh, hayride. and I went on the hayride caroling. I don't, I don't think we were married yet, but <laughs> we were caroling on the hayride, having a good old time. Um, pretending like it was cold because it was December in Charleston and it most definitely was not cold. So it was really like 76 and we're all yeah. wearing Christmas sweaters um, and sweating probably. And <laughs> at some point during this hayride, somebody threw an egg at somebody. Like, what? It's like a, I vaguely remember that. A kid, um, a kid or something threw an egg at at the, the hayride as it was going by. Do you remember that? Vaguely. And, um, I remember, I remember your brother jumped down like he was going to whoop somebody. I'm just funny for you because this is, I don't know. Go ahead. Keep going. No, no, I, I just remember husband. your brother remember jumped down ready to whoop somebody and your dad <laughs> thrashed him and said, get back on. Get back on the hayride. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. That's just what I remember about the hayride. I we gotta be careful what stories we tell. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, how much detail we give. Right. <laughs> well, and usually for me, gifts that like Santa Claus and Santa Claus presents to these shut ins are very sweet because, you know, they, they usually invite us into their homes and we stand around and sing to them and, you know, grandma's cry and it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. Um, and then afterwards, we would usually go to the Holiday Festival of Lights at the Green Forest Night Park, which you've been. Numerous times. Numerous times. Numerous times. It's a tradition. So, 
you go and ride on and see the light. And so if you went on the Caroling trip, he would still take you like in the hayride. So you're still going around with like 50 people. It was just mm-hmm. really memorable and really fun. And so, um, but okay, real quick. Oh man, I'm gonna time like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, done. We'll, we'll keep going. So, um, <clears throat> what is one of your like favorite memories? Because we've also spent Christmases, those are some of our favorite Christmas times and experiences in the U.S. We've also spent time outside of the U.S. for Christmas. So is there a memory that you've had from experiencing Christmas in one of the countries that we've been in for Christmas? So favorite Christmas, not in the U.S., has got to be 2011, Christmas 2011. 2011? Yeah, no. Yeah, 2011. 2012. No, yeah, Christmas, Christmas 2011, we spent in uh, Doi Antanon in Thailand, which is a village in the north of Thailand. And it's, the, high, it's the highest mountain in Thailand. I is that the actual name of the village? Is that just the name of the mountain? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Well, Doi Antanon was the name, I think, of the village. But anyway. We're in this village for Christmas. We we were able to take part in uh, killing and roasting a pig. Um, and then one of our one of the, one of our that. That was on Christmas one, of the, Day, one of the people on our our team. A shout out to to Jamie Ruby. Jamie. made a crush out of Coke cans. It's really pretty incredible. Um, I wish I crashed like a nativity set. A nativity set. Have one. She like fo- took several Coke cans and folded the metal and made a legitimate nativity scene. Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, and an angel like, out of a Coke can. Out of the metal of the Coke can. Yeah, it was incredible. It was, incredible. It was, incredible. It was like a work of art. And so we set that up. And... and so we put out stockings, and it, it's pretty funny culturally. Explaining to people, I never dog is losing his mind. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that or not, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty funny culturally trying to explain Santa Claus, Santa Claus to, to to other grown folks because you're like, there's this big fat red guy, and he he, he brings presents, and they're like, oh, do we need to leave the door unlocked so he can come? And we're like, no, no, don't worry, he comes down the chimney. And then trying to explain what like reindeer are because yeah, reindeer, yeah. we're you know reindeer, reindeer aren't, aren't a thing aren't a thing in Thailand. So it's like trying to explain what a reindeer is and why this fat guy would have them and like what is he doing with them? What's his what's his angle? What's his deal? And so it gets really interesting when you also have um, friends that are from you know even like European cultures because our friend her family is Dutch and so they have you know, the whole, like, how the Dutch celebrate Christmas, that was her family traditions, and so she was trying to explain, um... Krampus. Yeah, no, I don't know if it was Krampus, but it was... Krampus, but it was something yeah. like, um, you know, Santa Claus, and, and, you know, you give out shoes and things, and we're like, And he puts oh, presents shoes. in your shoes. Yeah, he puts presents in your shoes. I, right. I, I do remember that. So that was, that was cool that we tried to explain that. So we, we made all of our wonderful Thai friends put out stockings, and, um... Me and some of the girls went out and bought like little candies and soy milks and things like that, and we just made the biggest deal. We made chocolate chip pancakes, got the stuff for chocolate chip pancakes, and made it Christmas morning. And um, and it may our not Thai sound... friends were so gracious. They're like, "Oh, look at my present!" So, you know, they were just you know so excited, even though it was just little things. It may not sound like a big deal, but we were literally on top of a mountain in a village that had a tea farm and a school, and that was about it. Living in a you couldn't go around the store and get it, it, yeah like it, it, an activity yeah. set and it didn't happen. Yeah, so. it wasn't like we were not in a place that I remember on Christmas Day we hitchhiked into town, which is a whole other story in itself. But not in itself. We ended up in a large. It was a Lotus or sorry, a Tesco, like a big Tesco, which is like a big grocery store kind of. And we saw um, a a Scottish person, I guess. Yeah, saw us and said, Happy Christmas, guys. And it was the most wonderful thing because 
you know, Christmas is not a, uh, it's not really a holiday in Asia, you know, not really, not, not the same way that we have anyway. So it, it was just a Thursday, but I very distinctly remember this European, I think Scottish individual coming up to us and like, making a big deal about, you know, happy Christmas. And that was like, oh. But we did get to go celebrate with our friends, and we, we called our parents from the internet cafe and wished them Merry Christmas, and then we, mm-hmm. we all went to the cafe and had, like, fried fish or something, and yeah, it, it was, was just very memorable. It was really neat being in a culture of celebrating Christmas at such a big deal to us, being in a culture that was, like, it's a, you know, the equivalent of Columbus Day for us. Like, some people are okay with it, some people don't even know it happens, like, what, anyway. Um, so that's one of our... our our recent favorite Christmases. Now, <clears throat> Christmas with kids is probably the one of the best things on the face of the earth. You have to do it right because there's a lot of buildup for kids. You know, they hear about Christmas for six months, and you gotta keep an eye on materialism. You gotta make sure you educate about you know, what's the point of Christmas. What are we celebrating? Um, it's just a lot of anticipation because there's countdowns and all this, that, and the other. Um, you know, a 30 day countdown to us may not be a big deal, but a 30 day countdown to a four year old, it's like 15% of their life. Um, so, but Christmas with kids is absolutely wonderful. Um, what are some of your favorite memories of Christmas with our kids so far? Um, I just like. I like to see how they really just are really empathetic with other people. Um, like recently we talked about, you know, how can we give to our neighbors? Um, what's something we could do? And they were like, oh, well, we, you know, we were baking cookies for us, but we baked cookies for our neighbors. And so we baked cookies for our neighbors. And they were just so excited to just make cards for our neighbors. And, you know, we, we spent an afternoon like passing out. Um, cookies and it was cool because even we met some people down the street that we hadn't met before and it was like we were able to bless them with cookies and just be like hey Merry Christmas you guys and we were able to meet them and um it's just neat it's just neat to watch them like yes they know that you know they're excited about getting gifts but I think just to teach them it's about like more giving than receiving it's really sweet. It's so much fun to give people things. It's and, so much fun. And to serve and just to teach them that. We just try to hit on people are much more important than things. Yeah. People are more important than things. Yeah. I think it's a good way that, like, and I'm, I'm uh, copying this from one of our friends. Um, one of our friends, when, when Miriam was a baby, um, she's like one. Um, a friend of ours was like, oh, well, you know, how we do it in our family is our, you know, each one of my kids gets three gifts um, because I tell them that if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for you. And I was like, that's fantastic. I'm going to steal that. That's great. So, I mean, and nothing against if you give your kids more gifts. That's not what we're saying. But just the intentionality of like, we've kind of just stuck with that. Like, hey, like, what do you want for Christmas this year? And they know that they're going to get three really good gifts that they really want. And so it's funny to see our oldest is, you know, she's seven. And so she's getting a little bit older. And so she's kind of getting it now. We're like, you know, some of our younger kids, they come up with a list of like 50 things, which is great. Um, but they get like three really awesome gifts. And so our oldest has become very choosy about what gifts she gets. And she's very creative in thinking about it. And she thinks about like, well... I could ask for this, but I could also ask for it on my birthday that comes around in five months. So I could. She's the kind of kid she, who would she who would. About it. She's the kind I of kid who. That I want. She's the kind of kid who would wish for wish for more wishes, kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. you get three wishes. I want first wishes for unlimited wishes. Um. But yeah, it's been really cool. Um, we try to spend a lot of time together as a family. We try to do things. Um, try to not make it so much about getting stuff. I think one of my favorite memories was last Christmas. We went, we really wanted to give our kids the gift of Christmas snow, and I realized that we're not in charge of where it snows or when it snows and all that stuff. <coughs> That's true. Over that. 
But we were just thinking, like, man, how magical would that be? Because it doesn't really snow that often in South Carolina, as you know. Um, and so we were like, man, where can we go to find some snow? So we just kind of waited until, you know, two days before Christmas. And we were kind of checking the forecast. And it just so happened that if we drove four hours to Highlands, North Carolina, last year, we would see some Christmas snow. Well, there was... There was in the forecast. In the forecast. In the forecast. And it kept for changing snow. too. I remember that it was like thirty percent, then it go to sixty percent, then it go back down, and we're like, "Well, so we took a chance and we we went and drove four hours one way and four hours back to see snow, and we did." Not only did we see snow, we got caught in basically a blizzard in Highlands, North Carolina, which is a ridiculously cute little town. Got caught in a blizzard. Well, we parked downtown. Parked downtown. And while we I mean, waiting for the snow, we watched um, It's a Wonderful yeah, Life. Like, the snow was like the snow in it. It's a wonderful, Falls. It's a Wonderful Life when he's running down the main street. I mean, it was it was that big fluffy. And then, um, so that lasted about, it snowed for about an hour, probably uh, four to six inches of snow somewhere in that range. We ran around playing in it for we a little bit. As long as we could. Barry wore shorts that day. I had shorts on. Until we all got soaking wet and they got back in the car. And then... And David saved us because cars were slip sliding all around off the road. Yeah, and cars were... They were calling tow yeah. trucks and David managed to get us home safely. Lots Thank of cars. Well, you're welcome. Lots of cars were off the side of the road and our, 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 our trusty old minivan made it with no problem. Um, so, so we made it home. Now, we were just talking about, are we going to go try to find snow again this year? Maybe, maybe. There's no guarantee that it will snow again, so, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. But, um, I think that is 30 minutes. I think that's probably long enough for this evening. We need to wrap it up, but we just want to bless you wherever you are. Yeah. Um, this Christmas, no matter what you've been going through, the Lord sees you, and we just want to bless you with joy and peace this Christmas season. Yeah, just give you permission to rest. Not that you need our permission to do anything. Right. Just give you permission to rest and, 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 and spend time with loved ones, family members. Um, just, just give you a lot of grace. You guys have a lot of grace for each other. <laughs> Spending so much time together. Um. You know, yeah. If you've made it to this far in, in the podcast, thank you so much for listening. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.